What's up everyone? So why am I showing you this picture? I'm showing you this picture because this is a sperm whale and today's topic is all about sperm. So let's just get started. So what do you see here? We have here Eminem and we have Miley Cyrus. Now, what is the difference between Eminem and Miley Cyrus? Now, Eminem has balls, right? And Miley Cyrus does not. So what, what can balls do? Balls or testes can make sperm it's the only thing that can make sperm. Now, the same thing here. She has ovaries, which Eminem does not have. And ovaries is the only thing that can make an egg. Now, what do we call this process of making a sperm? We call it spermatogenesis. Now, what do we call the process of making an egg? We call it oogenesis. Okay, now, what is this about? Why do we care about this? Remember, we're made up of billions of cells. And most of our cells in our body, almost all of them, have 46 chromosomes, right? That's a normal cell. Now, sex cells, both of these, these are called sex cells, they are the only cells in our body that have half the amount of DNA than a normal cell. So they have 23 chromosomes instead of 46. What's the purpose of this? The purpose of this is so that when they combine, when they fertilize, they can form a normal cell, a cell that has 46 chromosomes. And this cell is normal, meaning it can develop properly during pregnancy to form a baby, right? So that's why we have these special cells called sex cells, that they have half the amount of DNA than a normal cell. And this allows us to easily form a normal human, human being. Like imagine we had a cell, imagine our sperm cells had 46 chromosomes. And the same with our egg cells. When they combine, we'll have a completely different organism, right? It won't be a human. Humans have 46 chromosomes. So that's why that's super important. Now, notice how I put a sun here. That's because I'm going to make a video on each of these topics. You need to know it for the IB. But in this video, so if you didn't understand this, don't worry. In this video, we're only going to be talking about spermatogenesis. Okay, spermatogenesis. This is the process of making a sperm. Sperm means sperm, right? And genesis means the synthesis of or the making of. So the making of sperm. That's what we're going to talk about. So let's zoom in. We know sperm, right? Sperm is made inside our balls, right? So we're going to zoom into here and see what's going on. What's really going on? So we zoom in. We zoom into M&M's ball sack and we can see. Remember, this is not accurate. Normally, we have a ball sack and inside the ball sack, we have the balls, okay? The ball sack is also called scrotum, scrotum, right? And inside the scrotum, we have the testes. So notice, just bear in mind, there is supposed to be a scrotum and inside the scrotum, we have the testes. So we're looking at the testes now, okay? What is going on here? Do you know all these structures? So the first one we should note, note is testes. That's this part here. I'm trying to color code them, okay? So just bear that in mind, testes. This right here is exactly where sperm is going to be made, and you'll see how soon. Now, next, what is this thing here? It's like a little thing located on this, on the testes. What do we call this? We call this the epididymis. Epididymis. And don't worry, we're going to talk about a function later. So for now, just know there's a thing called epididymis that's on the testes. Um, next, this thing. Notice how from the epididymis, we have this pipe coming off, this pipe. Right? And this pipe goes up and up and up and up. This is called the sperm duct, okay? also called the vas deferens. And we'll talk about that later as well. Now, where can sperm be made? I don't see a place where sperm can be made. Yeah, because we have to look inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to slice open this testes and see what's going on inside. So look, look carefully. We're slicing it open. We're removing the top and we're seeing what's going on. Okay, So bear in mind, we're looking now on the inside of a testes. Wow, you're like, oh, I give up. I'm going to watch another video. No, don't worry. This is real. It looks real complicated, but it's real simple. So what we can see here is what? Tell me what you see. Can you see a lot of little pipes, right? A lot of little pipes. That's all you can see, right? Look, a pipe, 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 pipe here, pipe there, pipe here, pipe everywhere, right? There's only pipes. So we call these pipes one important name. You need to remember it. It's called the seminiferous tubules. Again, color-coded, all the red things, seminiferous tubules. Because in these pipes is where sperm is going to be made. So sperm is made inside the testes, inside specifically these little pipes. These little pipes, okay? Real simple. That's where sperm is going to be made. Now, you might ask me, okay, but how? That's the whole purpose of this video. We're going to talk about it. So let's take a further look. Let's look at one of these pipes. So right now, we're looking at one of these pipes, okay? 
we're taking one of these pipes, we're dragging it out when we're looking at it. We're looking inside this pipe, okay? I hope you understand this diagram. We're looking inside the pipe. Now look, what can you see inside this pipe? A lot of things, we're gonna talk about it, don't worry. We can see a lot of things, a lot of cells here, a lot of cells, and Ian, you can see on the inside the sperm cell, right? That's the thing we're trying to make. So notice, this is where our sperm is going to be made, our ultimate spermy, okay? Inside these tubules. So now we're gonna talk about how exactly, how exactly is the sperm made inside these seminiferous tubules? Now, before we go further, I want you to understand what sperm means. Okay, sperm. Many people misunderstand sperm. Okay, I want you to think about sperm like this. Think about sperm like humans. If I ask you to think about a human, what do you think of? You can think of many things, right? You can think of a fetus. You can think of a baby. You can think of a toddler, you can think of a teenager, an adolescent, you can think of an adult, you can think of an elderly, you can think of um, many, thi many things, right? Many different types of humans. Now, sperm is the same thing. Sperm is a general term for a sperm cell, okay? But a sperm cell, like humans, has different, has different stages of life. So you can have a young sperm, an old sperm, a teenage sperm, a baby sperm, all of these. And all of these have different names, okay? Different names. So right now, I just want you to understand that sperm is a general name for, for all kinds of sperm cell. But there's many specific names that we're going to find out as we learn how sperm is made, okay? So don't think of sperm as a specific name. It's a general name, okay? But you'll see. So let's go further. Now we're gonna look at only this. We're gonna zoom into only this little seminiferous tubule to see exactly how sperm is made. Okay, here we have it. Here we have the seminiferous tubule, right, that we just saw, and we're gonna explain spermatogenesis. So, so what? Let's, where do we even start? So let's start with just labeling some things, right? So what do we have here? Blood vessels, blood vessels. Okay, little, little capillaries. And what do capillaries do? They carry, they carry nutrients and all the kind of things that our body needs, right? To where they need to be going to. Think about it if you cut yourself anywhere. Let's say you cut yourself in the knee by accident when you fall. You're going to bleed. What about you cut yourself on your face? You're going to bleed. What about if you cut yourself on your foot? You're going to bleed, right? Bl vessels are everywhere. It's the same here. These seminiferous tubules have vessels around them. If you cut your balls, I guarantee you, you will bleed because there's vessels everywhere. So don't just think, when we look in here, don't just think it's only these tubules. There's also capillaries around them, okay? Supplying them with nutrients, always, almost everywhere in the body. Now, what next? So we know these are capillaries. What are these big cells? What are these big cells? We call these Sertoli cells, okay? I'll put it right here, Sertoli cells. They have a huge function, which we'll talk about later. Um, notice as well, these little gaps in between the cells, the little gaps, they want some privacy. So they have a little space. This, the cells have a little bit of space in between them, but notice here, I made a big space. This is over exaggerated. I did it on purpose because sperm is made inside these spaces. Okay. But if I try and fit everything in this tiny space, you're never going to understand what I'm doing. Right? So I made an over exaggerated space here where I'll explain how sperm is made. Okay. So sperm is made in these spaces. I made a big space here. So it's clear. Okay. So it's not really this big. I just made this space for clarity. Now we have one other cell, Leydig cell. Leydig. Okay, you'll see what this function is also. Now, one more thing. You see this small barrier I put around? Um, these, this barrier is in fact made up of very, 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 very tiny cells, okay? But I didn't draw the cells because it'd be too small. But just know there's a small layer called a germinal layer. You don't need to really know it, but it's a small layer outside of these Sertoli cells. So we have the lumen, right? The inside, the pipe, where all the stuff, have, where all the liquid and stuff is. Then we have these Sertoli cells. And then on the most outside, we have this small layer of cells, okay? Called germinal cells, but they don't really do much. So we don't care. I'm not going to explain more about them, Okay. Okay, so this is this is our basic setup. So let's explain what's what actually happens. So spermatogenesis, to make a cell, we always start with what? Oh yeah, by the way, these Sertoli cells, I forgot to say, can also be called nurse cells. Sometimes you can see them as nurse cells or sustenacular cells. Nurse cells or sustenacular cells. But Sertoli cells is the way the IB likes it. So, but if your teacher, your teacher might mention another name, so just know there are more than one, there is more than one name. So Okay, so to make a cell, we start with what? We start with this stem cell, stem cell, okay? Remember, this is 
this stem cell will become a sperm cell. So this is technically one of the stages of the sperm's life. So we're going to give it a name. We call it spermatogonium. Okay, spermatogonium. Remember how I said sperm is a general name, right? That's because sperm applies to all of these names. But the specific name for this specific sperm is called spermatogonium. It's an immature cell. It's not a real, it's not a real mature sperm yet. Okay, it can't do it, it can't fertilize anything yet. So, but we call it spermatogonium. Now, remember, a sperm cell, its whole job is to differentiate and become a specialized cell. In this case, a sperm cell. So what's it gonna do? So at first, what happens is these cells, these spermatogonium, are just gonna just remember they're just gonna duplicate and stuff. Okay, so let's say they duplicate. Let's say this one duplicates and forms the exact same cell. We're trying to build up the amount of spermato spermatogoniums, right? This process, right, is called mitosis, right? Very simple. It's when you exactly duplicate a cell, make it the exact same. So in this little space here, we're duplicating and making a lot of. Um, a lot of uh, spermatogoniums, right? Because we want to make a lot of sperms. Every day, you make a million, 100 million sperms, okay? So you, you got to have a lot of these sperm cells. I mean, these, a lot of these stem cells. Now, these cells, these spermatogonium can do one of two things. They can either keep dividing, right? And make many more. Or they can enter meiosis, meiosis. If this cell decides to enter meiosis, we call it another name. We call it a primary spermatocyte. A primary spermatocyte okay this cell is gonna go into meiosis and that means I'll show you exactly what that means later but if you don't know the difference between mitosis and meiosis I really recommend you to watch those videos because it's really important to understand it's a quite a long process and I won't be able to explain it in this video okay so you need to watch a video if you don't know what those are but anyways I'll try my best here to make it clear as possible so these cells that decide to um, go further into meiosis 1 are called primary spermatocytes and these cells that are formed after meiosis 1 so these cells here have a different name secondary spermatocytes now notice how I put 2n and n here remember our normal cells right are diploid diploid and I'll explain again what that means later so don't worry too much if you don't get it now our normal cells are diploid diploid another name for that is 2n okay and when these cells and undergo meiosis 1, they form these secondary spermatocytes. They are haploid, okay? So N means haploid. And I'll explain what that means later in this video. So if you don't get it now, just understand what's going on here vaguely. Okay, so these primary spermatocytes, they undergo meiosis 1 to form secondary spermatocytes, right? Now, we know meiosis doesn't stop there. There's a meiosis 2. So each of these two cells will undergo meiosis 2. So here we go, meiosis 2. So totally from one spermatogonium, we managed to form four of these cells. What do we call these final cells? These cells that um, appear after meiosis 2. We call them spermatids, okay? And they're also haploids. Now, now you might be like, well, we formed now form spermatids through this process from one stem cell. Hmm. But they don't look like stem cells. I mean, they don't look like sperm cells. You're damn right they don't. Because... Spermatids is not the final name. So when these spermatids differentiate and grow and mature, they form the real sperm cells, the ones you know. And these ones that you know are called spermatozoa. So that is exactly what I meant by sperm is just a general name. Look at all these names we just saw. We have spermatogonium, spermatocytes, primary spermatocytes, secondary spermatocytes, spermatids, spermatozoa, right? So many different names, okay? all for a different stage of the sperm's life. Now, let's get on to this next part. How did all this happen? It didn't happen just by magic, right? Something had to tell these tubular cells to do all this. So how did it happen? It all starts with our brain, our brain, right? Our brain is magical. So our brain has a little part here called the pituitary gland, and no, this is not a ball sack. This is a part of your brain. And what this pituitary gland is gonna do is make some when you when you reach puberty right because you don't make sperm before puberty so when you reach puberty these glands wake up basically and they make some hormones two hormones lh and fsh okay fsh is this orange one okay and lh is going to be this blue one now each of these will have a different function in helping this process okay so let's first start with lh 
So LH, called luteinizing hormone, okay, luteinizing hormone, it is made here by the pituitary and it is sent into the vessels, okay, it's sent into the vessels and travels all the way from the brain's vessels all the way to these uh, testes vessels, okay, and so they eventually arrive in these vessels. Then when they get to this place, they leave, okay, and they go to Leydig cells. Their whole job, L, I would like to remember it as L for Leydig cells, they go to these Leydig cells and tell them to wake up and produce something called testosterone. Okay, it's going to be this little red molecule. Okay, testosterone. Now, testosterone is going to have a function. Okay, it's going to make... So basically, this LH tells this Leydig, Leydig cell to make a lot of testosterone. This testosterone will leave the Leydig cells and go into here, the tubules. But the problem is... They are very um, afraid of water. They're not water soluble. So this whole lumen here where this whole process is happening, like remember in these grooves, there's a lot of water, there's a lot of water everywhere. But testosterone is not soluble in water. So it can't reach the space to help this process to happen. So because testosterone is supposed to try and stimulate all of these processes like mitosis, meiosis, meiosis 1, meiosis 2, it's supposed to stimulate or speed up these processes okay that's the whole purpose of testosterone so it can't do that right now so that's going to depend on our fsh look fsh also made here is going to enter the same thing it's going to go from the brain in the bloodstream all the way here and eventually it's going to reach here come out only this one fsh is not going to go to the latex cells it's going to go to these sertoli cells so it goes to these sertoli cells and basically tells them to make a molecule that can make this um, this testosterone soluble so after it comes here it stimulates the sertoli cell or this nurse cell to make a molecule and now this molecule is going to help testosterone become soluble once testosterone is soluble it can come into the space once it's in this space it can stimulate mitosis meiosis one meiosis two so it can basically make all of these processes happen remember you know how during puberty um, men and women start becoming vastly different right so for example Men will become bigger, stronger, will have deeper voice, will have hair growth and all these kinds of things. Whereas women will be different due to, due to, for example, breast changes. Their voice will not be go deeper. They will also have hair growth in, in places and so on, right? So there's going to be difference between the male and the female. Now, testosterone is the reason why. So not only does testosterone affect spermatogenesis by stimulating all these stages, as I just, men as I just mentioned, so remember how Leydig cells release this testosterone when the LH triggers it, right? L for Leydig cells and S for Sertoli cells. These FSH will come to the Sertoli cells. So when this uh, testosterone is secreted, it can go here and do that, but it can also go to the vessels. And when they're in the vessels, they can get carried around the entire body. So for example, it can go to your muscles as a man and that can create cause them to grow. You become stronger. It can go cause your hair to grow in more places. It can cause your voice to change. So not only does it affect spermatogenesis directly when puberty starts, it can affect your physical traits. So that's it. That's all I want to talk about uh, regarding all these hormones, right? So now I want to go make this part clear. Why we call this part 2N or diploid and this one haploid. So here we go. So remember during, this will make much more sense if you actually understand meiosis. So I'm just trying to make something quick here. Remember when we have a cell. So say this is our pink sperm, this cell. Okay, it's this cell. And here we have our nucleus and here we have DNA, right? But we normally have a lot of DNA. So we're only going to use one, one example here. So say this is your mom's, the striped one, and this is your dad's chromosomes for, for a specific gene, okay, or a specific chromosome pair. Now, we call this diploid because we call it 2N because there are two variations. You have a variation from your mom, a variation from your dad. So we call it diploid. Now, when uh, before meiosis, the DNA will duplicate, right? It will duplicate. So it will duplicate. Now you still have a variation from your mom and a variation from your dad. So it's still called diploid. But when it goes into meiosis 1, right? So we're talking now this stage this stage where it turns from this into this, notice how it becomes from a 2N to an haploid. Let's see why. Because now these cells will divide. And so the, this one will go to one cell and this chromosome pair will go to this cell. So now you only have your mom's DNA where you only have one variation. So we call it N, 1N or haploid. See, there's only one variation. Now when it goes again into meiosis 2, what happens? The same thing. So now this one will split, so the one cell will get one 
another cell will get another one, same here. And all of these cells only have one variation, so we still call them haploid or N. So I hope that makes a bit more sense on why we call this diploid and haploid. And when you answer a question regarding spermatogenesis, you should mention uh, that they're diploid and these are haploid, okay? Okay, now let's go into the semen production part. So we finished spermatogenesis. So now we're going to go to the part of um, what happens next. So remember, we just made these sperm cells, these sperm cells, right? Now, these sperm cells are mature, but they're not that mature. What do I mean by that? So these spermatozoa have tails and stuff and they can swim, but they can't swim that fast. Remember this. Remember when we talked about this thing here, right? This is the epididymis, right? And we saw that um, the testes is where the sperm will be made. Let's go to a better picture. Let's go to this one again. Remember, this is here. Here is where the sperm are made in these seminiferous tubules. I'll get the name again. Seminiferous tubules, right? So they're made here. And after they're made, we have this guy. We have the spermatozoa, right? And what's going to happen is they can kind of swim, but not that good. So what's going to happen is they'll be sent through these pipes all the way up here into these pipes in the epididymis, right? We call this whole section here the epididymis. And these tubes, um, all these tubes are seminiferous tubes. So we're sending them to the epididymis from the testes, right? And in here, these spermatozoa will mature even more and become even better at swimming, even better, right? Now they become basically optimal. They become in their prime and they're ready to go fertilize the egg. So let's come back here. So we have this sperm. It's made. It goes to the, it goes to the epididymis, matures, now becomes ready. After that, it will go up this pipe. We'll talk about the name of that pipe shortly. It goes here, it looks like it goes into this thing, but it doesn't, it goes behind, and it leaves here through this pipe here, and yeah, that will be um, semen. But semen, or um, semen, does not only consist of sperm, there's other stuff as well. So we gotta get a better picture to visualize that. So here we have a side view. Let's label some stuff. We got the penis here, we got what, what's this? Testes, right? We got, what's this? Epididymis. Now. Remember that pipe that carries this these mature sperm, this one here. What do we call this pipe? We call this pipe by the name sperm duct or vas deferens, okay? So this it will go up here and notice, remember, in this picture, it looked like it was going into this thing, but it's actually going behind it. So you can see more clearly in this picture. What is this thing here, this whole thing? This is called your bladder. This is where your pee is stored. Bladder. Okay, so you can see here goes the sperm, it goes through the sperm, sperm duct, around, back here, behind the bladder, and then we notice this little thing here. What's this called? This little sac. This little sac is called your seminal vesicle. Seminal vesicle. And what it does is it makes, um, basically, it makes fructose. Fructose is like a type of energy. It's like glucose, okay? It's like fructose. And it also makes mucus, some, some like juice, okay, that... The purpose of the fructose is to provide energy for these sperms to be able to swim, right? Because the, swim, the sperms need to be able to swim fast, and that's going to require a lot of energy, so they need fructose. And the mucus is just to protect them, okay? So, we can see the seminal vesicle will secrete all that stuff into the same pipe. They connect, you know? You see? Here comes the pipe. It connects with this one, and they combine into the same pipe. Now, this same pipe will continue and pass through this structure. What's the structure? This is called your prostate gland. Only the male has that. The prostate gland. And it is going to make, it's going to secrete an alkaline fluid, a basic fluid. Because remember, the female, the vagina, is, um, al uh, is acidic. So if the sperm goes in there, it will die. It will die quickly. But if we, and if we combine the sperm with alkaline fluid, then it will survive because the acid will get neutralized by the alkaline. And so the sperm will survive, right? Because alkaline and acid is opposite. They kind of neutralize each other. So that's why, that's what the prostate gland does. So now think about it. In this pipe, we have a, a mixture right here. We have a mixture of this prostate gland, acid, um, alkaline. We have some mixture of this um, fructose and mucus. And, and we also have sperm. Not only that, remember, here we have a bladder. You can pee. A male pees and ejaculates from the same pipe. Notice, the, this is the bladder, here comes the pee, same pipe. So you pee and you ejaculate from the same pipe, right? But obviously, um, 
obviously they will happen at different times, right? Not the same time. So here we have this pipe that we call here that has everything in it from the from the prostate gland and the seminal vesicle and the sperm and the pee. This is called the urethra, urethra, this pipe that will carry everything out. And this final product that is the mix of the, the sperm, the uh, fructose, the alkali juice, the mucus, all of that is called semen. And that's what you see when you ejaculate, okay? And that's what's going to go in and hopefully meet the egg and make the... Because remember, it contains the sperm. So hopefully that will meet the egg. So that's it. So I know I said a lot. So here are some words. The only key thing that you need to take away from this video is spermatogenesis, right? Here's the process in words. I hope it makes sense. Um, this process here, I'll make a separate video where I explain this better, the whole ejaculation part. This video was just mainly about spermatogenesis, but I wanted to make it clear on what happens afterwards so you can see the use. Here you have an exam paper just for you. So this is an exam question, four marks. Sometimes they can go higher, six to eight marks. Um, so just be prepared. And here is the mark scheme. So you can see if you know and you're able to do it.